Let's see. Orlando, Florida, Republic <clears throat> excuse me, Republican line. Well, Hi. one more. Go ahead. Hi. Yes. What I'm going to say is um, probably going to be pretty um, upsetting um, to both of you men gentlemen. Um, but I'm going to be as straightforward as I can. Um, and I don't want to be cut off while I'm saying it, too. Um, uh -oh. Do you believe <laughs> in heterosexual? I mean, heterosexuals, we get married because our marriage is sealed by God. We follow the letter of the law. Now, we're not perfect, but we do. Now, you're saying we're follow we follow the God of who? Not just any God, not just any pagan God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The same ones that the Muslims, I mean, you know, well, they claim it's the same, and the Jews. And that's why same-sex marriage is an issue. Well, I will, because, I will just point out on, to you, just let me just follow up with that, that you have every right to do that. But we do not live in a theocratic state. There is a separation between church and state. For example, it is against, clearly, absolutely clearly the rules of, of, of Abraham and indeed of, of Christianity that you can divorce. It is forbidden. But as citizens in a, in a civil society, you have a right to a civil divorce. This is a society based upon a separation of church and state. You are absolutely, and I would defend your right to exclude homosexuals from marriage in your congregations or whenever you see fit, although I would disagree with you. But as a matter of civil rights, and of the state and of and of a secular society apart from the ch church you're wrong it's a well, civil right and it needs to be defended well then let me defend my my case then okay you um, go ahead well there there really isn't a separation between the church and the state there is technically but not really and i have another question for you what if a man says that he was very attracted to a beast and he decided that it was, he was born by nature to be with that beast, be it a dog or be it a whatever. And he decides he wants to marry it. I mean, how far in society are we going to go? Thanks. I'm sorry, but I find the equation of a, a human being to a beast, of homosexuals to animals, to be something that I actually is beneath answering. Um, it seemed to me when you said that the separation of church and state was, was technical only, uh, rather than actual, that you you had to be describing the Constitution as a technicality um, in that instance, which I I hope would be for most listeners or most viewers rather a, a sufficient rebuttal. The Constitution states very explicitly that the government cannot concern itself with the business of religion. This uh, doesn't mean the religious people can't concern themselves with the business of government. No one intends it to mean that. Andrew and I have probably our biggest disagreement on on this very point. He regards himself as in some way created and supervised by a supreme being, I can't think how anyone believes such a thing. I, I also think it's a very horrible idea, uh, the, the idea of, of cradle to grave uh, invigilation. Not only well, it doesn't stop with the grave, according to people like Andrew. I think it's a really frightening and, and a nauseating wish to be a slave. Fortunately, there's um, absolutely no reason to believe uh, that there's any evidence for it at all. Hey, Tennessee, you're on. Go ahead. Oh, good morning, Brian. Hi. Christopher um, and Andrew. How are you today? Good. Um, I was... Um, so, so. <laughs> listening, pardon me? We're both feeling a little so, so, so. Like the crack, yeah, this like is new for them. They don't like getting up at this hour. Go ahead, Paul. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I've been up since seven, so anyway. Um, I was uh, very taken aback by the, um, the rude statement from the previous caller who evidently um, thinks they're a Christian because they uh, can be rude, but we Christians can't be rude. And um, I was very taken aback because of what she was saying um, was actually stemming from what happened in the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve were exposed from the Garden. And, and that was after, you know, this fall of mankind, you know, the, the sin entered the world and people forgot who God was and wanted to go their own way. And from that, um, wanting to go their own way has stemmed um, a, um, forgive me for this, but perversity of marriage that was ordained uh, by God in the Garden of Eden between a man and, and one woman, one man, one woman. And um, everything has stemmed from that. Well, the previous caller went to the far extreme into um, um, bestiality, and, and that is so abhorrent to God as is anything that is um, uh, of his 
divine nature. Thanks, Carl. Let's, let's start with Christopher Hitchens on this. What are you, what are you thinking? I, you... I was thinking about the talking snake and who in the Garden of Eden and all this, these sinister fairy tales. That I mean, you, the caller sounds so sweet. I, I almost don't want to say what I think about the the horror of, of the, the, these beliefs. Um, you, you do not believe any of this. I think it is a very nasty fairy tale, and I'm very relieved that it's not. Are, true. are you an athe atheist? I'm an anti-theist. In other words, it's not that I don't believe that there is a God. I think that, it, that the discovery there isn't is a huge relief because it would be like living in a celestial North Korea if there was one. You would never be able to escape this attention. It would be even worse if it was benign, as, as some people claim it to be. I think it's a horrible idea. I think it's, it comes from the slave element within, within us, the wish to be looked after and protected and in some sense owned, which I repudiate with every every fiber of myself. Well, Christopher... So that's, that's what I really, if you want, I'll tell you what I really think about religion. But well, that's, 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 that's the fair enough. Let me, let me counter that. that. You know, we can come, we can come together on, on constitute. We can both exist in this republic uh, as, 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 as civil people, but I, I must say that, that I the, notion, the, notion that, the notion that belief in God and, and, and love of, of Christ is some sort of permanent slavery uh, that one lives one's life controlled and unable to have freedom. Uh, to me, at least, as someone who, who is a believer, is a misdescription of the way it is. In fact, it is, a, it is a form of liberation. Without it, I know I couldn't have uh, gotten through whatever life has thrown my way. And, uh, and, and I also know, in my heart of hearts, that, uh, that my being gay is something also that God loves and, and wants me to bring to its best fruition. Um, but like straight people or gay people, we can all sin, we can all go away from God. Um, but for me, Christianity is not slavery, it's liberation. And, uh, and the ability to have, let me just finish one more point, the ability to have some perspective on the world, some place to go where this world's daily pressures do not, does not get you and cannot get you, is an incredibly liberating and important experience. And and so many people have it, and I, I'm very glad that, 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 that God is near. See, all that's supposed to sound, and does in a way, modest and humble and so forth, but think of what an incredibly solipsistic and arrogant claim it really is. You claim to, <laughs> you claim to know what God wants. No, I don't. You claim to think he has a plan for you. No, I, what, I do think that. I don't know what it is. unbelievable conceit of the supposedly humble and meek. Well, yes, it is an and, amazing and, and, conceit. Well, yeah, here's, it's why amazing think, here's why conceit, I think it's, here's why I think it's authoritarian. I'm told that there was a human sacrifice that took place 2,000 years or so ago, in which I had no say, which would not have taken place if I had anything to do with it, but which has saved me whether I want to be saved or not. Well, I don't like to be talked to in that tone. Of well, then you're, okay. you're talking about I a, really a don't. certain There's, kind When of it isn't sickly, it's rather authoritarian, that, yeah. that kind of talk. And you managed to do, to combine, in your own approach, a tiny element of, of each. I'm very sorry to have to tell you. <laughs> Tulsa, Oklahoma, on the Democrat. Hey, I may be, may, correct me if I'm not mistaken, um, you said that you're gay? I, that, that I am, yes. Okay, so that's homosexual? Yes. Okay, okay, um, and you said that you're a Christian also? I did. Okay, well, there's a letter that was written to, um, the church that was in Rome a long time ago in the New Testament, and it speaks of, um, it, it, um if you don't mind, I'd like, I'll just quote, um, it says, it says, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness since um what may be known about god is plain to them because god's made it plain to them um and um and he's clearly seen by and understood by the things that he, he's made um it says right here that it says well, although they knew god they didn't glorify him as god or give him thanks but they came but their thinking became futile and their foolish heart was darkened and my point's coming up although they claim to be wise and know god they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal god for images made to look like mortal man um birds and animals and uh, reptiles okay it says therefore god gave them over to sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the um decorating of their bodies with one another they exchanged the truth of god for a lie and worshipped and served the created things rather than the creator. Thanks, Carl. I was about to say, when, how much more of that were you going to get? Well, well, well no he's, he's citing, um, I think he's citing Romans, um, which, mm -hmm. and he's leading up to the condemnation of homosexuality, or at least what 
St. Paul seemed to think was homosexuality. Um, let me say I will leave your conscience to you and your God and maybe you will leave my conscience to me and mine. Um, well, broadly speaking, there is enormous numbers of things in the Gospels, and not in the Gospels, but in the Bible and the Old Testament, which are clearly forbidden. For example, all sorts of kosher regulations. Uh, not many Christians contemporarily follow those kosher regulations. In fact, the Bible says that if you are gay, you should be stoned to death. Um, this is a practice that is upheld in many parts of the world. Uh, what I would ask of any Christian who fundamentally believes you believe says this book is the work of, of God. I, I believe think. that it's inspired, the inspired by the word of God. Well, I then think. I leave you with it. I mean, I, you've left me. I've, I've lived with it my entire life, Christopher. You, 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 you're, but you you're just welcome. Said, you just said to this guy, "You can have your God, and I can have mine." No, I did not. What, why? Yes, you did. No, I did not. I said. Your conscience. It's a la carte religion. No, no, no it's not a the word, word of God, or it's not, surely. No, 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 Christopher. It, it, there, is, there are many, many themes in Christian belief, and one of them, only one of them is a fundamentalist one in which every single word of the Bible is absolutely literally true. I don't happen to hold that particular view. I'm a Catholic. I believe the Bible has to be interpreted through one's own experience, one's own faith experience, through the tradition of the church and the scriptures. Let me the tradition of the church is to say that what's something that's essential to your nature is a, is a filthy sin. No, it isn't. The condition, no, let me just correct you on that, because it's very important. The teaching, very teaching of the church, which is on this matter, the teaching is, of is, a non not, a, of the is not a sin. The, te the not, teaching of a non-pedophile wing of that church. You can leave your anti-Catholic slurs elsewhere. But that's not anti-Catholic. Um, it's not I who shot uh, these uh, abusers. Um, le le the, the point, <laughs> no, I'm not defending those people either. Um, well, the, the point, churches, the point of the church, I know, and I have been very harsh on them as well. However, let me say this and make the point. Um, so the church officially says that being gay is not a sin. Um, only acting upon it in a sexual manner is regarded as sinful. This, this... Uh, as you of the lowest kind. Well, I... It's I, like saying hate the sin and love the sin. I, I think They're it is... About your I think it is... I think it is when you actually reflect upon it and read it and think about it incoherent. My book, Virtually Normal, has the whole chapter dealing that, with this issue. Let me share um, with you all some... Very good book, by the way. Man. Emails. Thank you, Christopher. From Joyce Boys, congratulations. You have really two of the lowest of journalists to grace your stage today. Seems <laughs> easy for you to cater to that thinking so frequently anymore. I just can't gush how wonderful C-SPAN is. Confused. Uh, Jay Montgomery says, I'm deeply disappointed in you, Andrew Sullivan and Christopher Hitchens. They are like two peas on, on the same pod. There's not a dime's worth of difference between the two of them. They are both right-wing extremists. Andrew Sullivan is the worst of the worst, and Hitchens is not far behind. I stopped my subscription of the Nation magazine because of Hitchens. Nice. Are you I a right-winger? We, we can take that as a, if, if you were to pick some, a comment. Uh, uh, yeah. Swansea, South Carolina, you're next. Well, good morning, Complaints fan. Uh, I'd like to say this to Mr. <laughs> Hitchens. Uh, I love it. Maybe uh, he could, uh, if you want to know why the left's receding faster than his hairline, then all you have to do is listen to what he said about religion. He's unwilling for people to live under the tyranny of their own conscience, which is basically what religion is, but he'd be perfectly happy to have us all live under the tyranny of a thousand or a million socialist bureaucrats. Uh, all you have to do is uh, examine the intellectual this dishonesty of that to see where he's coming from. <laughs> yeah. If receding it's hairline is a function, is a, is a sign of, of one's intellectual decrepitude, then I'm really in trouble. How do you know where my hairline was before, by the way? <laughs> um, I, I don't know if you heard him. He, he slipped in an interesting... It's interesting, though, how often the loving Christian types begin with a, a nasty ad hominem remark, and they go on, of course, to get stupider and stupider. <laughs> the idea is, the idea of living under the tyranny of your own conscience is not what religion says at all. Religion says you have to live under a code transmitted through holy books and divine warrant and so on. The, those of us who live with the tyranny only of our own conscience and believe that an ethical life can be lived without reference to the supernatural are called humanists or atheists or in my case anti-theists. You have it precisely wrong sir but then say you would. Did you hear him slip in the complaint spam? I did. I thought that was sweet.